And now for Newsmakers, the portion of Resource Intelligence TV where we speak with executives from publicly traded companies that are making the news today. And my first guest is Peter Cashin, the president and CEO of Quest Uranium. Quest is actively seeking for uh, uranium and rare earths in Ontario and Quebec primarily. And like a handful of other companies in this sector, Quest in particular has jumped about fivefold since May 1st. Thanks a lot for being here today, Peter. Pleasure to come along. Your main focus right now is your Strange Lake project, which I think is primarily responsible for the activity in your share price this year. Can you tell us about that? Okay. Uh, Strange Lake started as a uranium project uh, in what we call the George River mm -hmm. area of northeastern Quebec and western Labrador. Um, we, we found that there was a strong associated rare earth element signature related to the uh, uranium occurrences that we found at the time. Um, in 2007, we were monitoring the claim situation of claims that were head, held by competitors over the Strange Lake rare earth element deposit. Mm -hmm. uh, and they accidentally fell open at, in the fall of 2007 on at least the claims that were on the Quebec side of the deposit. It's very deposit, fortuitous. Eh? Fortuitous, yeah. The deposit is, straddles the uh, provincial boundary. Uh, they fell open, we staked them because we happen to be active in the general vicinity of those claims. What's the, ha the size of that uh, acreage there? The it's just uh, the, well, our total land position in, in, uh, f around the Strange Lake prior to the acquisition of the claims that covered the deposit was approximately 130,000 hectares, fairly sizable chunk of ground. Indeed. And we added just 14 additional claims, and that's approximately maybe a, a, an additional f uh, 2,000 hectares, not a very large block of ground. Um, uh, so we worked it through in earnest, 2008. We did some airborne geophysics on top of the Strange Lake deposit, as well as the general surroundings to get to understand what the context of the mineralization was and try to maybe characterize the geophysical signature of the deposit. Mm. And what we recognize is that we did see the Strange Lake deposit without an issue because there's an amount of thorium associated with the mineralization. What we saw were individual uh, associated anomalies within a 10 kilometer radius of the deposit. Uh, one of them is uh, approximately three kilometers to the northwest of Strange Lake and that's the new discovery. That's your B zone? That's what we call our B zone, <coughs> correct. So you've got the a zone, which is the original site that's got a historic resource of 52 million tons, and the B zone, uh, which is your new discovery. And what's the target size for the B zone? Uh, the surface footprint of the new zone is approximately four times that of um, the uh, original discovery. Right. And to date, we've uh, we've drilled it down to approximately uh, 150 meters of mineralization. Our st our holes stop the mineralization, so we. In other words, we really don't know what the ulti ultimate depth profile of this mineralized zone is pretty significant. Um, and John Kaiser wrote, it, wrote us up and he recognized the value of our asset. He put a, a per ton rock value of Strange Lake from our analysis at about $304 a ton. So you mentioned some drilling that's going on and I'm curious yeah. because you do have a large land package here. How much effort are you spending on uh looking for new potential deposits and how much on drilling? Um, we, I would say we applied uh, this year about two-thirds of our um, expenditures, our exploration expenditures on the project in drilling. The rest was continued uh, reconnaissance evaluation for new targets. Um, we just uh, made an announcement this last Thursday of the discovery of a brand new layered rare earth element bearing intrusive complex some of the money went into the, the evaluating those targets as well. And that was your 2.1 million This past the field season, yeah, 2009. Okay. What about next year then? Where's the, where's the capital going? Well, we raised, did a, a, a finance, we closed the financing recently, 6.3 million. Mm -hmm. uh, we, that netted us approximately 5.8. Uh, I would say of that amount, uh, a full 5 million will go into the, the drilling alone at Strange Lake. So you did uh, three financings uh, this year and how much did you raise in total? I believe I, I raised 8.4 million dollars uh, so far in 2009. A, a 1.5 million dollar financing uh, that closed in July at 22 cents. Uh, we did a further small uh, Canadian flow-through financing uh, in the month of August at 35 cents. 
So you did three financings at different times in the year, but I get the impression that uh, most of your shareholders are really happy about the results. I have not met a single one that's, uh, that's unhappy, put it that way. Yeah. Peter, what's the um, time frame for this project? In looking at s rare earths in particular, they can take quite a long time, particularly I think because of metallurgy, they're very complex deposits. Right. What are you looking at in terms of rolling this out and getting to a feasibility study? Uh, I'll, I'll address the metallurgy issue first. Okay. Um, IOC, the Iron Ore Company of Canada, undertook fairly advanced feasibility on the original deposit, the main zone, including metallurgy. And uh, according to their uh, reports, all the reporting that we have in hand currently, uh, it, it, the, the mineralization is, is uh, amenable to conventional uh, mining and milling processes and flotation hmm. uh, with f high 70, low 80 percent recoveries on the metals, which is extremely high relative to our competitors in that field. Um, we have taken a bulk sample of the B zone and we've sent it out to a metallurgical lab actually in Colorado um, to take a look at recoveries. But so far the preliminary work is in, indicates that the recoveries should be about the same as the original deposit. So in other words, very good news for us. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Okay then, so how long do you think until we get to the next step? Well, um, like I say, the, we, the bulk sample's out. Uh, we anticipate getting the results back on that uh, work uh, by the second quarter of 2010. Um, we are also undertaking a resource estimate to be 43101 compliant. Mm -hmm. That we are, I'm telling the market uh, by mid-year 2010 but if all goes well, uh, we anticipate we might even have it as early as the end of uh, the first quarter of 2010, early, uh, early second quarter. Now, the Fraser Institute has said of Quebec that it's the number one mining jurisdiction in the world. Is that your experience of uh, Quebec? Well, I, 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 in my experience in, in 30 years of, of mining exploration, um, I would say the province of Quebec is much more open armed in terms of uh, recognizing the, the importance of, of the provincial economy uh, of, and the contribution of mining and, and uh, minerals processing and, mm -hmm. and mining technology and the rest. Mm -hmm. they, they ensure particularly security of tenor of the land holdings that you have. Um, at right down to, uh, we are currently north of the 50th parallel at Strange Lake and the government provides a 38 and 3 quarter percent rebate back on every dollar that we expend in exploration in the province. So, for example, you're planning to spend $5 million plus this year. You're, you're planning on getting almost 40% of that back at you. That's correct. To put back into the project. And we get that with the filing of an audited financial statement at our year end. So, in other words, we'd anticipate getting that money uh, in July of 2010. That's an incredible bonus, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Where do you see Quest Uranium in five years' time? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us to get to that point, but mm -hmm. certainly I think ensuring and upgrading the quality of the resource that we currently have um, to a category that we can uh, make a decision to go into a feasibility study. Uh, there's a lot of indications from our preliminary work of uh, fairly significant resource potential on the property and <coughs> other targets we define from our reconnaissance work. Mm -hmm. And at this stage, we really don't know even where the center of gravity of the system. What we have so far is very interesting, very high grade, very significant in terms of physical size. But we're still not certain that we're at the heart of the system. Right. It's quite a big system. We've got a lot of work ahead. In five years' time, I believe that uh, because it's an open, pitable resource, it comes right to the surface. Uh, there's uh, no overburden. Mm. It's, uh, it's perfect, uh, perfectly oriented, parallel to the topography. Uh, that we could eventually be well on our way to uh, breaking off some of our first ore from the deposit. Wow. Peter, very interesting project, and I thank you for being on the show and telling us more about it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You can find out more about Peter Cashin and Quest Uranium by going to www.sharenow.net and looking up Quest Uranium Corporation.